What's up, people? Said Mac here, Music Tech Works. Uh, today, I just want to have a conversation. It's a big debate going on uh, right now. It's been going on for a while, but I just want to kind of give my take on it and just, I don't know, maybe set the record straight or just kind of, you know, talk about it a little bit. Beat maker versus producer, but I want to throw something else in there. I want to throw in uh, beat maker versus songwriter versus producer. Okay, so this is the first thing to take away from that is that all of the all the players have a role in completing the final song okay who does what um who gets credit for what how much are they paid how is the song split up that's something that we'll get into later on but the first thing i want to do i just wanted to find the roles okay so beat maker beat maker beat maker beat maker beat maker if you make beats you make tracks you are a beat maker okay so or you can also say you are the producer of the beat or the producer or creator of the music okay so beat makers okay very valuable in the game all right so basically a beat maker comes with a track comes with an instrumental already and then they'll either write the song which is the lyric the lyrical part of the song or if it's, if it's a it could be a skeleton for a jazz instrument it's for just for an instrumental track you're the beat maker or drum programmer the song may say but then another producer or another beat maker or another musician may come in and add other elements on top all right so what we have is the beat maker first comes with the track all right and there's nothing else to it and that's basically it so are you a producer yes you are you are the producer of the instrumental of the track or some credits may say music by you know not necessarily produced by or say music or it may say music produced by okay if you read the credits uh nowadays 
I don't know if, it, if a lot of people read the credits, but I used to get the, the records and the CDs and the albums, and I would read the credits and figure out, that's how I learned a lot of producers' names and the instrumentalists, who played guitar, who played bass, who did the vocal arrangement, vocal production. That's another producer, whoever arranges or produces the vocals, basically how to sing it, what notes to sing, and just going through different takes of the vocals and, and finalizing the vocal, the vocal. That's a vocal producer, producer or a vocal arranger. Okay, so back to the beat maker, all right? So let's say you have a website. Okay, let's say you have a BeatStars page. And do I have a BeatStars page? No, I don't. I'll explain why later, but I don't. But you put your beats up on BeatStars and you release your, your tracks or whatever, $25, $30 a song or whatever, a track, non-exclusive. Artist gets on the track and they're in another city another country and they just go in with no input from you or anything and they came up with a complete song and that was basically your input providing the track so in that case you are the beat maker okay you are the one who made the beat all right the song was not produced by you the music was produced by you okay you are the beat maker beat makers are very important okay all right so don't look down when somebody say, oh, you're just a beat maker. It's not that you're just a beat maker. Being a beat maker is heavy. I'm a beat maker. I make beats all the time. I give, I send out tracks. I, artists get on my tracks. I'm not in the studio with them. I'm not giving them any direction. At the most, um, when it's something like that, they don't come to me or I don't fly to them. They'll get my opinion on it. And I get my feedback from them, from there. I'll give my feedback from that point on, you know, uh, after the fact, or I can produce from a distance if needed. You know, with technology today, I can be in the studio with anybody, FaceTime or, or um, through other remote desktop applications. I can actually be in the studio with them and actually conduct the session. And I have done that a few times and I still do it right now to this day. I actually have artists up in, up in Ohio trying to get it down here to work on this project. But, may just uh book the session up there if i can't go up there we'll just book it and i'll just be there virtually and the engineer all he'll do is just press record and stop and i direct the session and everything because it's actually um i did the beats okay and i actually wrote the lyrics okay and i have in my head on what the final version should sound like okay that's when i come in as a producer okay all right, so beat maker, responsible for the instrumental, the music, music by, such and such and such, okay. All right, so from there, we have the songwriter. Who is the songwriter? First of all, you as a beat maker, you are a songwriter. Songwriting does not just apply to lyrics. Songwriting applies to every element of the track, okay. Except for maybe the mixing. That's another that's another topic. We'll talk about that later. You are writing the song, whether you are writing lyrics or music. Okay, so don't get it twisted. All right, so the writer, the writer or writers of the track is the ones or are the ones who wrote the music and wrote the lyrics. Okay, so you are a writer. Okay, uh, you know, I hear people, oh, I wrote. I wrote that, I wrote that by myself. No, you co-wrote the song. You, if you didn't do the instrumental, even in part, if you didn't do the instrumental, you are a co-writer of that song. The actual instrumentalist who put the track together, the beat maker, as uh, we are called, is the co-writer of that song, okay? So when you register your music with a performance rights organization, you have categories of writer. Okay, what type of writer are you? Are you the author or are you the composer? Okay, so the author is the one who writes the lyrics. That's the words to the song. Okay, the composer is the one who writes the music. Okay, and in some cases, a participant of a song creator or of a song creation is both composer and author. Okay, in my cases, I am 
most of the time I am the composer and the author, which means I write the lyrics and the songs, whether I'm collabing with another beat maker or producer of the music, or I'm collabing with another lyric writer. Okay, so the song writer are those who actually contribute to the creation of the song as far as providing the elements, the kick drum, the snare, the um, the hi-hat that's coming in, the pads that you add to the track. That's why, you know, a lot of these, a lot of producers back in the 90s, people used to get upset because uh, particular producers were getting credit for songs. They'll come in and out, add a hi-hat and they can say that they could have wrote that song. Okay, and then at the end of the day, they're in the session and they're agreeing or directing and next thing you know they're, they're the producer of the track okay so but let's go back here or the producer of the song I'm, and i'm talking about getting to the final song all right so now let's go back okay so we have the beat maker and then we have the songwriter okay or the beat makers or the songwriters okay so if you are writing lyrics or writing music you are a songwriter for that song okay there's no in between there's nothing else that's just what it is okay so don't get twisted don't get it twisted with um songwriters are just people who write lyrics no songwriters are, are the ones who actually create the music as well okay so what in what aspect are you a songwriter are you the beat maker are you the lyricist or are you both okay all right so let's go to the next person on this list is that is the producer Okay, and when I say producer, I mean the one who glues everything together and put a stamp on it and say it's good to go. They see the vision and they perfect their vision. And part of their vision is, now, not to say that nobody else has a say so in the song, they, you know, they do, they do. Like the, the artist who's performing the song, you know, they want it to be a certain way, but they usually trust the producer for the uh, final result. Okay, also the beat maker or the producer of the music and even the lyricists, you know, they want it to come out a certain way. It is the producer's job to put the final stamp on the song, okay? Keep in mind, there are producers who are beat makers, songwriters, and they put the final stamp of approval on the overall song. They are the director. They're like the director of a movie, okay? They put all the scenes, all the pieces and everything together. And all the pieces can be, okay, I need a bass player. Let me get a bass player. I need a uh, keyboardist. I need a keyboardist. The bass player and keyboardist are not necessarily producers, okay? They're just hired musicians. And they may or may not get credit for writing. All right. So with me, when I collab with a, another musician, I definitely give them credit for writing because I give them the idea. Can't copyright an idea, by the way. You cannot register an idea as a copyright. OK, but copyrights, uh, ideas and let's see, ideas and song titles are two things that you can't register a copyright for. OK, so what I would give an idea to a bass player, I may play something on the keyboard you know emulating until i get my bass down i'm gonna learn one day I'm, I'm actually learning pretty good right now but then i let them take it along and then the, what they add to the bass is just it's just amazing to me so i definitely give them writing credit and i got that um that it it was always in my mind to credit musicians when i bring other musicians in because of they're just not playing because i can just play whatever but when they come in they bring their own flavor to me that is writing okay just like uh, Tony Love, he's the guitarist for Akon, and they did um, what is Sweet Escape by Gwen Stefani. They did It Don't Matter uh, by Akon. He's on the guitar on it, and Akon actually gave him credit for his guitar part. He just didn't, uh, like, here, I'm gonna pay you this much money to play. No, he actually gave him uh, part of the publishing on that, and we'll talk about the publishing, who gets what, and things like that in a later video. And um, so you have the producer who puts the final stamp on the song. The producer's involved from the beginning to the end. He or she is in charge of picking the track, okay? And keep this in mind, they may not always make the beat. They may not always write the song. They may not 
always be a part of the creation uh, standpoint from the beginning. For example, and you can go on YouTube. I'm going to try to remember put a link on here, but you can you can search it on YouTube easily. Michael Jackson's demos. Okay, have you heard his demos before Quincy Jones got a hold of it? Okay, so Michael Jackson had song ideas. Uh, him and his brothers and some other musicians would lay the songs down. Um, what's the song? Uh, where you say mama, say mama, say mama, Michael, so that song right there. That's one of the demos that you hear. Also, there's a Billie Jean demo on there. Those are songs that Michael Jackson actually wrote, okay, musically and lyrically. Okay, so when you go take a look, listen to those video, to those songs, to those demos, and then go back and then go listen to the finished product, that's where you hear the difference. Okay, that is the job of a producer to pull everything together. Uh, Mark Jackson's his band, you know, when he was making the demos, and for what I understand, I probably can't confirm 100%, but I know Randy was involved. What happened when Quincy Jones got the job to produce Michael's records, uh, let's start with Off The Wall, they had all these songs, okay? So you already had the songwriters in. You had Rod Temperton, you had uh, James Ingram. It, there was a whole lot of writers, Stevie Wonder. They had demos of these songs. The tracks are already made, the demo version. You can actually see Rod Temperton, Baby Be Mine demo. You can Google it, he's in there singing it and it's, it's People think it sounds crazy, but me as a, somebody who can't sing and I make demos for artists that I write this song and a lot of times my whole job or idea is to, you know, get a demo singer in here to sing it if I'm uh, shopping into an artist and I really want them to know how, know the potential of the song. I'll hire a singer to demo the songs. It's actually worth it because I can't sing. So what, I, what happened is they got all these songs together, okay? They were scratched out made the, the beat makers or musicians or whatnot uh michael's brothers and other musicians and michael michael can he can kind of he can he was you know he can he can pick out a few chords and licks on the piano from you know from my research he didn't ever sit down on stage that i saw and just sit there and play but from what i understand is that you know he's a musician as well as far as hands-on on uh couple of instruments uh but you know that's some of the research and we'll have fun with that later but they came with all these songs okay usually i think they said they listened to over 100 songs they got it narrowed down and i'm talking about both albums actually all three albums and those albums are off the wall thriller and bad okay those three albums are michael's i call those pinnacles and then you have uh you know the history joint and the other stuff he did with Terry Rod and, and one of the most underrated albums in music history, Invincible. And there was some political stuff going on with that. But to get back to the point, they came with all these songs, okay? All right. And they were good songs. And what a, a producer's job is, is to be able to hear what the final version could actually sound like. So when Quincy Jones got this, him and his collaborators, Sadia Garrett is one of them, James Ingram, you know, they they got together and they tightened everything up and he hired top-notch musicians to replay those parts. And a couple of the positions, um, musicians, I can't remember his name, he played the keyboards for Michael Jackson. I'll think of his name in a minute and I'll uh, put it right here. His name. And he actually won it. I think he got, but I'm not 100% sure. He won a 10% of of uh, can't stop to, don't stop to you good enough because he actually did the bridge on that to change up. And rumor is Michael was you know not wanting to give up anything because Michael actually wrote this song, but Quincy Jones produced it. Okay, and he hired many musicians, including the brothers Johnson, to play on those records and a few other people. And um, he's the producer of the record. He orchestrated everything. He arranged it, okay? He said, hey, Michael, you know, try this. Do it like this. No, that's not right. Let's take that again. Hey, Brother Johnson, let's play that bass line again. That wasn't right. He actually put the stamp of approval on the, the final version, okay? So let's, go, let's come up a little bit. Let's talk about um, Rodney Jerkins and Brandy, okay? So in, in, I'm just bringing them up because... She had an album that was really, really good that came out 
and I'm trying to remember the name of it, but I can't remember. I'll just put it right here. And it was actually a pretty good album. I think it was around 2000, between 2008 and 2010. It was after Full Moon. And the album didn't do well commercially. And guess who got the blame for that? Rodney Jerkins, because he's a producer. He gave his final stamp. The label trusted him. The artist trusted him. And he got the blame for the record, you know, not being uh, as commercially successful as the previous records. Okay, on that team, Rodney, of course, he did um, most of the production. Okay, I'm gonna say all of the production as far as hands on making the beats and all that. Then he had a, he has a team of writers along with himself and lyric writers. All right, and then they put the record together. Okay, and then Rodney goes back and touch it up. Brandy does her thing, and with Brandy. If you listen to her latest project, which should have won Grammy like 10 times, like I don't, I don't get it, but we'll talk about that. I'm going to actually be breaking down projects and breaking down records. And so what happened is that that particular project, which it, it flopped, basically, I don't think it went gold, but it was actually a pretty good record. And the producer got blamed because he was the one who was, you know, the final say so on those records. Okay. So you have, um, the producer who's in charge of the final sound of the the actual songs okay and it can be for the album like um that's sometimes your executive producer they can be both hands on or they can just be the investor they can be the overseer like uh let's just call them the a and r person or they may be the one who front all the money to put the record out executive producer by okay he hired the producers he hired the writers he hired the engineer he hired the team but she and they put it all together. They are the executive producer. Of, they're like project managers, basically. Like, let's say it's about to be a construction project going on. Uh, you have to have a foreman. You have to have a project manager to time everything out and to make to assign tasks and to double check to make sure all the tasks get done on a timely and in a timely manner. That's what an executive producer is. Okay, so. That also goes for music. You know, the executive producer is the one who's in charge of putting the final, final cohesive project together. So your producer is the one who's in charge of putting the song together. And they may be both. Okay. You may be the producer and the executive producer. All right. Right now, the projects I'm working on, I kind of switched up a little bit of what I'm doing in music. I am based on the executive producer. Okay. And I am the beat maker. I'm a songwriter, okay, and I'm a producer, all right, and I do collaborate with other musicians as well and other artists, and I have people in my back pocket as far as vocal arrangements because I cannot sing, all right, I can direct singers, I can tell you if your note is bad, I can tell you if I'm feeling that energy or not, can I demonstrate that for you? No, so I will have vocalists around while I'm working on songs. And they'll do that. That's what Sadia Garrett, not only was Sadia Garrett, well, he is, he's still an amazing musician to this day. Sadia Garrett wrote Man in the Mirror. She uh, worked uh, She worked with Michael Jackson big time on that, that bad album. And she did her uh, solo stuff and with the band she was with, she wasn't like, she had a really good career and she's still doing well from this day. She got her, she got her credit for her writing. She makes sure she got her credit and I just know her, uh, she should be good. Okay, so I mean, we're talking off the wall and well, I know at least bad, we're talking bad, bad, what, 20 million, 30 million copies. Um, what's the what song she did, Man in the Mirror? That was, I don't know, Diamond maybe. That was a big song for her. And she sung background on it and she uh, produced the vocals. So that's another producer, okay? Another producer or old vocal arranger. You are a, if you put the vocals together, direct give the notes the harmony all of that kind of stuff the phrasing you are a vocal producer now a lot of singers got this ability to do this some of them don't i'm gonna say most of them don't they can just sing they got good voices they can sing but every singer is not a vocal producer okay all right so um just real quick i'm just kind of going off the top how do you become a vocal producer listen to records listen to records listen to how the vocals are uh right now my project of the month Actually, it's for March, but I started earliest. Shalimar, okay, look up Shalimar, the original group 
Okay, even from the first guy that was in the group, not Howard Hewitt, but the other guys, and I cannot remember. But when they started with uh, Howard Hewitt, listen to the vocal arrangements, listen how tight everything is. And um, I like to study the, the old music and apply it to the new music as well. Listen to the, to the. Uh, I give you some examples of today, uh, Jasmine Sullivan, listen to her vocal arrangements and really listen to Brandy. Goodness gracious, Brandy. Brandy's vocal arrangements are sick. Okay. Uh, listen to some Monica. Listen to Summer Walker. She's a pretty good vocal arranger, producer herself. Um, her, my favorite. Okay. Listen to her vocal arrangements. Just listen to how everything is put together. Everything is tight. Okay. Listen to Erica Badu's records. Go back and listen to those records. Go back and listen to Michael Jackson's records and even the uh, ones with Teddy Riley. Okay, so let's go back to beat maker, songwriter, producer, all right? So, Teddy Riley, I brought him up, all right? Teddy Riley is a beat maker, okay? He's also a songwriter. From the interview, interviews that I've seen, he has written, he, he said he liked to come with hooks, choruses, and with the song ideas, okay? Then he would, he would collab with artists. He has another, what's his name, last name? I wanna say Bernard. Uh, wrote a remember remember the time i will put his correct name right here in case i say it wrong all right but he is the teddy riley is the beat maker all right he's also a songwriter because he wrote the music all right and he contributes to the lyrics and he is the producer he puts the final stamp on the songs okay all those early guy records all those i would say I'm just guessing maybe even the early stuff with Heavy D and like Mr. Big Stuff, insane. Kumo D, How You Like Me Now. He was probably at that age, 14, 15 years old, maybe younger. Um, he was probably more of a beat maker at that time, but I'm not sure if he directed Kumo D on how to say his lyrics or not. But I would still consider him uh, a producer because he had that little knack thing that he, he just added that extra thing to just polish the track off. Uh, just like uh, the show by Dougie Fresh. Okay, so Teddy Riley came in and added in a couple more elements like this shaker. He said that shaker keeps him moving when the beat stop. That is a producer, okay? That is a producer putting the final touches on the song, making that song what it is until this day, all right? He actually played the Inspector Gadget line and legally, I'm sure they had to give that writer or that publishing company credit for that dun, 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 and just can't put you know other people's music and uh, bits of their composi compositions into your songs without you know getting it properly uh, cleared and credited actually so they didn't have to get a master license they just had to deal with the publishing part and I don't know I don't know maybe they asked for 10 15 percent of the song but that part actually helped make that song the show all right so a let's talk about another beat maker who's a songwriter and who is also a producer okay jermaine dupri jermaine dupri is one of my top he's probably i don't know, i'll almost say he's my favorite i mean i have so many but definitely top five on my list of all time i'm gonna be doing a little special rundown of top producers over the last uh 30 years and then we'll you know come up to now but uh I say the top producers last five years. We'll do a list of that. A list just with those producers for you younger heads. All right. Um, but Jermaine Dupri is a beat maker. He makes beats. Okay. He writes lyrics and he polishes the song. Okay. One of his collaborators, Manny Seal, Emmanuel Seal. All right. He is also. A lot of people think he just, uh, you know, he'll Jermaine to do the beat and then Manny will come on top and play play notes and all that kind of stuff. He's actually a producer too, all right? Um, Manny would, he would, he would be a beat maker, okay? Um, he would come in, or instrumentalist, he would come in and add his thing to Jermaine's drum tracks. And there you go. You know, same thing, uh, you have Brian Michael Cox. Uh, he's actually a producer, like all the way the final stamp guy. He makes beats too, all right, and he writes lyrics, all right. 
and he is just that guy all right so let's talk about uh, a lot of these if you don't know these producers just google them and all kind of stuff will come up scott storch you probably heard of scott storch scott storch is a musician he is a beat maker okay he is a producer of the instrumental all right so he basically got a million beats okay <laughs> like ridiculous all right we all know scott store scott source was blazing back in those days and he's still he's still fired to this day so scott stores come with all these tracks and then you would have songwriters come in who wrote lyrics okay and then they would contribute their lyrics to the tracks all right and then usually the final producer it would be a combination of the artist and the songwriter who would actually end up being the final stampers of the music or the executive producer at the label who are, who's overseeing the project they put the final stamp on the record so scott storch can did he take songs to the was he the final stamp guy i don't know okay so he would come in he would produce with uh dr dre he would work with timlin and he had his contribution to the tracks but at the end of the day dre said final stamp but the song that Dr. Dre has with the piano riff that's uh, still, you know, it's called Still, Still Dre. Like, that song is amazing, okay? It has uh, instrumentation by Scott Storch on Dr. Dre's beat, okay? And Jay-Z came in, Jay-Z came in as a songwriter, all right? Jay-Z wrote the lyrics to that song, okay? And then Dr. Dre put the final stamp on it. All right, still Dre. All right, so go back and listen to that and think of all the players that's involved with that one song. So you have Scott Storch, who was a writer, because he did write compositions on that. He's a songwriter on that record, okay? And I would say the beat maker is Dre, the final stamp is Dre, and the, the songwriters, the songwriter of that project is, uh, of the lyrics is Jay-Z, okay? Yes, Jay-Z wrote Still Dre beast of a song all right one of the songs i i love to reference mixes to that whole album that chronic i always say chronic 2001 that whole project the way that it was mixed the uh, he switched over to the mpc 3000 like and he's still on that ssl board and it's just everything running through the analog circuits just just warming up and everything and so those are examples uh who else we got and today we have Metro Boomin, all right, one of my favorite producers. All right, and he is a producer. He's a beat maker, a songwriter, and a producer. And he's an executive producer, okay? So he'll make the beats. He'll write lyrics as well for him or other artists, okay? And then he will put the final stamp, okay? He directs his engineer. He trusts his engineer to make it come out right. But he, he also has the ability to, to direct the engineer that is shaping the final sound of the song. That is what a producer is versus a beat maker. Okay. So how do you become a producer? Like I said about vocal vocal arrangements, you have to listen to music. You have to study music. You have to study music. When I was teaching at one of the tech schools, one of the first things we did, we studied music. Okay, even as an engineer, it was an engineering class and the, the focus was Pro Tools, all right? So we really have to listen and understand and see what's going on in the music. One of the first things I did, we well, we pulled up different genres of music, okay? I did, uh, it was classical orchestra music, all right? And it was also, Michael Jackson Off the Wall is like one of the most perfect references you can have, just beginning to understand, to understand sound and engineering and, and just the way things go um, to just to just get your to get your mentality to get your mind right to open up the doors to your mind like listening to Michael Jackson's off the wall listening to the Eagles there uh, just just get the Eagles greatest hits listen to the engine and listen to the way the the vocals are mixed the way everything is tracked and just the arrangements and the uh, the way that they did the vocals and just listen to that that's how you become a producer. You have to actually listen and try to recreate this, some of this stuff. I used to have a fit. My manager said, hey, why don't you remake? Back then it was uh, Umbrella by, you know, Rihanna. And I'm like, I'm not remaking that song. I, I can play that song like right now. Like, I don't need to remake it. 
But it's a great exercise. Now I learned now, and to my manager, you were right. Take the the hottest song, like the top forty. Just do it as an exercise. Take the top songs, the first of all, the ones that you like, and also the ones that are charting, and just try to try to remake them. Just break down and, and see exactly what they did. And it actually help. It will actually help and um, help improve on your skills. Cause you know, if you're on that level, or if you want to get on that level, just do what they did. You know. Um, Hey, I, I used to remake a lot of tracks from from song and it just helped me get better because it's helping me hear and see what they did and I may not do exactly what they did but I, I would get pretty much the same results just about and try to get an artist or singer and just try to uh, re-record that song try to remake it and then just see what happens you know just say put yourself in the producer's chair put yourself behind the boards you know so um, the beat maker songwriter producer wherever level you are you may be all of them and you may be on a certain level and you may be trying to get to a different level i'm going to say this again listen to music study music study 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 okay every month i pick an artist or a group or a producer all i do is listen to their work and i break it down and i may come in the studio and try to just re do one of the things i was working on um well really honestly michael jackson is an artist that i I work on every month i study his music and his writers and his producers i study them on a regular basis one of the tracks that i'm actually remaking is um tell me why human nature okay human nature the way that was done now that's another perfect example go back and listen to the demo of that song okay then listen to the final version of what quincy jones did okay that is what a producer does. The beat makers came together. They they, they they presented the song. The songwriters, they they presented the demo. Everything was cool. Yeah, I can hear the final version of this. And next thing you know, we got human nature. You got the you got the final version that got released. Okay, so those demos, you can still if, if you're a producer, you can hear what the song, what the final version is gonna be. And you should have the ability to take it even further from there. So that is my take on beat maker versus songwriter versus producer. Okay. So go ahead and uh, come in and make, go ahead and make some comments in the comment section. Anybody got any questions or anything that they would like to say or contribute? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And if anybody calling you a beat maker, don't look at it like it's an insult. It's not an insult. I'm a beat maker. I love being a beat maker. Um, when I was heavy online, leasing beats, leasing tracks, I was a beat maker because I went in the studio. I had one track that I leased a thousand times, <laughs> like a thousand, literally a thousand times. Nobody ever released a song, but I was the beat maker for that record because I was not physically in that studio with that artist putting that final record together. I was a songwriter because I wrote the music, but I was not the producer of the song. I was the producer or creator of the track. Okay. Sometimes when I present to artists or shopping to artists or whoever, I, I, I write a hook sometimes, you know. Sometimes they'll take the hook, sometimes they won't. Probably, I don't know, two out of ten take my hooks. All right, but that's okay because I'm still a writer on that track. I'm the beat maker. And if they call me to come to the studio, because I'm an engineer as well, so I'm not just somebody who make beats and play instruments. I'm actually an engineer. But that's another way to get in the door. Get in the door as an engineer. All right. So we'll um, be doing some videos on engineering and all the way to basics from your cables down to setting levels and everything and understanding, you know, exactly what microphones are and what they do, your speakers, preamps, microphone preamps and things like that. I'm actually working with a songwriter. You're probably watching this video and, you know, we're laughing about it later because I'm having him on to the, on the live uh, podcast once we get that up. But I sent him some a, a track to write to. All right, I already got the hook. Okay, I got my niece singing the hook and everything. She sounds wonderful, by the way. I'm not just saying that. Uh, she has perfect pitch, but she's singing the hook. And his job is to, you know, here take a crack at the lyrics. Go ahead and take a crack at the lyrics. All right, so man, somebody somebody throw something my way, and I know it's possible possibly gonna be you know okay yeah see because what i'm doing i'm writing songs i'm presenting them i give them to my lawyer they take them through the whatever you know and they put them out there because 
that's just how it goes sometimes. You know, if you have a lawyer, your lawyer can help you shop your music. But what I'm doing is uh, I'm just building up my catalog and getting ready to, you know, send out some songs and everything. So I said, you know what, I'm going to open the door to uh, some other songwriters just to kind of help build my catalog up and to help put them in the game as well and things like that. And while I'm on my journey, going up to the next level as well. So, you know, bottom line, you know, it's he finally sent me something, you know, but guess what? Three and a half weeks later, okay, he was so concerned about how the microphone sounded. My vocal sound thin. Oh, my auto tune. It's not enough reverb. It's not this. It's something. It's always something with the mic and this and that. Dude, all I care about is a song, all right? I don't care about your technical uh, know how on how to record yourself. As long as it sounds decent, and it sounded decent. What I, the first thing we did, we recommend he get a channel strip for his mic. He, he switched his mic. Back out to the road NT1A, which is an excellent mic, by the way, for two hundred and something dollars. It's an excellent microphone, and I suggested that he run it through a preamp. So we got the channel strip, the uh, Persona Studio One. I mean, the Studio Channel, which is a pretty good. It's like a baby version of like the Avalon, what I have, but it's it's pretty decent and it's it's perfect for you know making demos. Like I've even had artists release pro projects with that with that connection, and so it's it's not so much about the oh my god he's engineering and he it sound like this and that yeah it got to sound great but if you're doing a song demo i just need to be able to interpret the song okay i don't care about just don't have your auto tune out of, out of key all right that's that's a no-no don't have to be perfect singing i need your phrasing to be correct and i need a, a decent nice tone one that's not too bassy one that's not too high not too screechy record with a little bit of compression you don't have to mix it and master it like it's about to go on the radio I just want to hear the song, okay? The publisher is not gonna, or the the artist or whoever you shopping the song to, they're not gonna turn down a song because they don't like the way it was recorded. No, they're gonna turn down the song because they don't like the song. It's about the song. So that opportunity might may have gotten blown from him. And then when I got the song, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. I'm gonna, if he gives us permission to critique it, we'll critique it and everything and then I'll play what I actually wrote to the song because I finished the song and it's in my catalog right now and it's uh, being played for you know a few signed and unsigned artists I don't care if they signed or not signed I just like to hear myself you know out there and whatnot but uh, we'll do a part two to this a little bit later on and maybe go live once we get let's say we get 500 once I get 500 subscribers I'm gonna start going live okay I hope that at least, I don't know, maybe I should wait till I get about 5,000 subscribers. And then maybe I can get five or 10 people to join me live and and, uh, and just go from there. We just have a live back and forth. I got a couple of Grammy songwriter, award-winning um, mentors and everything that I work with. And I'm going to see if I can get them on. We're going to talk about songwriting. And then I got platinum, multi-platinum producer, uh, I think he still has the number one rap single in the history of rap, even over Tupac. Um, we will, I'll see if I can get him. I actually did a podcast with him and a few other of, uh, of my other partners or what, yeah, back in the day. We did it right before the the um, the pandemic happened and I never got to edit and I don't think I could even find the session, but I do have the bounce down. Only thing was, it's really not mixed, but you can kind of hear I probably throw like a, a, a denoiser or something on there to get the little hiss and all of that because it's, it's not mixed. Everybody had their own microphone and it was just kind of straight recorded and I didn't do any kind of process or anything to it. But I'll try to, I got the, the two track bounce down of it and I'll just, you know, enhance a little bit just so we can hear. So um, I don't like releasing stuff like that because I say I'm an audio engineer, but it's really, this, this would actually be more about the, um, the actual information so i think it'll be good for you all to hear from a beat maker who was also a songwriter and he was the producer of the song the number one rap song in history you can look it up it may be number one or number two now but at the time the single sold five million copies and they still tour to this day all right off of that one song the album was good they had another single and they had two singles that I know about, the big one, and then they had another one that was part of a of, of a movie. It was on the movie soundtrack, and uh, they still tour to this day. 
and uh, I'll be bringing up a little bit more information on that. So if you are called, if you want to say, oh, you just a beat maker, there's no such thing as just a beat maker. Dude, you are a musician. You are a producer. You're producing the music, okay? You are a songwriter. If you were in the studio sitting down with that artist giving direction, putting the final step on this song, whether it's with you or in collaboration with somebody else, you are the producer, all right? So... And my last one, my, one of my last examples is okay. So you heard projects where uh, artists were signed. You know, back in the day, they were signed with Columbia and then this and that. They they had their run, then they come back out independent. There's a difference in the music. Okay, it's basically because they're they're in the studio by themselves working. Nobody's in there giving directions. They're not being produced. They're just in there singing, and and nobody tell them, oh, that's a bad note. That's a sharp note. Uh, one artist I was working with, you know, she decided, hey, you know, we'll talk about loyalty and stuff like that, but she decided to go to other studios and record, okay? And, oh, man, this happened a few times with different artists. Uh, Bolo just released a video called just resetting, you know, resetting. And one thing he was working with artists all the time, signing and unsigned, big and small, kind of like what I'm doing now as well. But it's just, it's, I just sit back and be like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take a different approach to this, but kind of digressing a little bit off the subject. But basically, just dealing with artists. We'll talk about dealing with artists later uh, and loyalty and things like that. Okay. Um, but this artist was going, or these artists were going to other studios. Um, and recording music, all right? No direction, nobody was producing or correcting them in the studio, and it just straight up sound like garbage. I'm gonna be straight up, that's what it is. It sound like garbage, you know? And not saying all my stuff is perfect or anything, but I can, I hear, when I hear a flat note, I know it's a flat note. When I hear a rapper and he not, he's, his delivery is off, I know when it's off. I know when it's off. We got to do that again. I don't care how many. Who has they had to do? I don't know if it was T.I. or somebody. He was in the studio with either. He might have been in the studio with Tupa or somebody. Or or was it uh, Fabulous? One of them. Anyway, they, it was 95 takes before the the song was actually, before the producer was like, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's it. Now we're done. Okay. Dr. Dre directing Easy e He's a producer. He's producing. All right. So he was the beat maker, all right, songwriter, because he wrote the beat, he wrote the music, all right, Ice Cube was the lyricist, he's a songwriter, and Dr. Dre gave the final step, he's the producer, all right, so we'll talk more about that, just just understand, you're a beat maker, that's great, you know, I'm a beat maker as well, a songwriter, you're a songwriter as well, so work your way up to being a producer, start working with artists, just don't sit in the studio making beats all day get somebody you know around the hood who can rap start recording learn how to engineer that's how you get your foot in the door that's how i got my foot in the door there are a billion <laughs> beat makers and quote unquote producers all right but how many engineers do we have that's why you see it's it's on a few like on the let's say on the level of you know uh you know i could probably on one hand name the top engineers in the game right now there's only a few but it's a million producers and artists need to be recorded they need to be mixed you know they need to be mastered I'm not saying something you can learn overnight but start that process start recording artists that's how you get your foot in the door that's how i got to la that's how i was on a plane to la i was out there for a couple of days and my job was to just update the studio this was a connection from a ASCAP songwriter of the year, multi-platinum artist, singer, and whatnot. I'm gonna bring him on one day. He said he'll do an interview with me, kind of share his story and uh, spit some game to y'all. But it was through a connection of his, he introduced me to this guy, all right? So, and this guy right here is actually, a, he's a producer as well. He's a uh, beat maker and a producer, all right? And a songwriter, okay? So he had one of the biggest groups a few years ago and they, they disbanded since then, but I got to experience that up front. And I actually went out there and updated the studio and I played my beats in the studio. Who? Who where those beats come from? Where are those beats? Oh, this is something I've been working on. Oh, 
happens. You're a producer. You don't go in like, oh, I make beats. Everybody in their mama make beats. You know, everybody got, you know, a version of, of FL Studio or whatever they can get for free, and they make beats. No shots to FL Studio, but it is what it is. All right. But everybody make beats, and, you know, you got to go in something different. You know, you got to go in different. Um, one story was I was engineering um, at a, it's a studio. Uh, in Latonia, Georgia, it's called Scotts Bunny. I, I went in there. That's how I met one of my uh, guys I collaborated with. We actually did, I don't know how many songs we got. I'm not going to say his name now because, like, he's done with music and I'm not going to promote that song. But I do own the music, so I'm actually taking those songs and doing something else with them. But uh, the songwriter was there. Okay, she she had a beat and the artist was there and she taught him a song and he was just singing. There was no arrangement. There was no background. There was no harmonies. There was nothing. So me sitting in my engineering spot, I just couldn't help it. I had to say something. I'm like, hey, do y'all want my opinion on this? Like, you know, and the next thing you know, I'm, I'm giving him harmonies to sing. I'm, I'm having him rephrase it this way and that way and ever since then me and home me and home girl the actual songwriter we've been cool ever since so when she comes here and she bring her artists you know we we produce together so um but how i met that person i was an engineer i was an engineer at that studio okay and it was a couple other artists that came through there that i engineered for and um but just being an engineer can get your foot in the door okay learn how to record all right learn how to record more than likely you might can get some credit for recording or they'll trust you with recording but you may not be the one to mix right off the top you definitely won't be the one to master okay so mixing and mastering two different crafts that are takes years to learn okay we have this microwave society right now with all the online stuff and things like that and the, the plugins and the 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 stuff that mixes the music for you all this stuff is cool but just knowing exactly what that i call it ai software knowing, knowing exactly what it does is a plus you know i haven't actually tested it yet but i, I probably will a little bit later on uh, i know autotope has some things you can run your music through there and it'll kind of it's more like an eq thing it'll kind of straighten it out for you and uh, you can actually put this plug in i'll think of it in a minute i'll put it here if i can think of it uh, you run your stuff through it. I had a buddy of mine, and I was mixing his beats and everything, but he wanted to try that. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with him not wanting to pay me, which is fine, you know, so, you know, find somebody else to do it. And you have to value your time. So learn how to value your time. I wasted a lot of years trying to bring in people, trying to do this, trying to do that. Um, just, just know your worth, you know, starting off, be humble. Uh, I keep up a few studios around here in Atlanta. Um, some, it could be anything. The mic stopped working. The preamp went out. The tube blown. Anything. The engineer didn't show up that night. They called me. I come down there. I engineer for them. Um, some wiring or something came loose in the back. A fuse blow. The something happened with I don't know. Amp went out. The computer crashed. Like all kind of stuff. Like I'm that guy. I'm on call for that kind of stuff. All right. It's time to update their computer. It's time to I'm just troubleshooting. Uh, I can't get these plugins to work. Something's not installing. Blah, 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 blah. That's what I do. I come in and actually have a service for that. I do work with uh, independent studio owners, uh, major studio owners as well. Um, you know, just, just being an engineer, that's how I get my foot in the door. I never tell them from the beginning that I'm a songwriter. That's what I am, first of all. First of all, I'm a songwriter, okay? I started off writing poetry and poems, having little crushes on the girls, and you know, around probably around the fourth, fifth grade, I was writing poetry and all that kind of stuff. And the music was always there. And then I would write little songs, you know, me and my partner Alvin, we were writing little songs and you know, sing things like that. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's just one of the things that's in me. But I learned how to engineer because I was taking a couple of artists that I was working with, I was taking them to a studio in Alabama. And I saw what he was doing. This is when Cakewalk was hot, uh, probably around 95 or 96 or something like that. We went to the studio and I saw what he was doing. It was the first time I saw somebody do, use a computer. Before then, we were recording with uh, 
ADAT systems. Okay, so you have they look like the VHS VHS tape. They were VHS tapes, but you record with the ADAT system. So, but what I learned is that everything is going through this mixing board, and then the uh, engineer he would shape the sound. But shout out to Steve. Uh, Steve had a four track or eight track machine tape. He had the ASR ten and all kind of stuff. Back then, I didn't know what it was, but I was just he would program it. But I would play the notes in. He would record everything. Then he would put the songs together, and uh. So I run it. Well, I'll tell the story later about that. What happened with that song and how funny it was when the artist that I that actually recorded one of my first songs was uh one of the girls back in junior high that I had it. You know, we we went together for like one day, <laughs> and then by the time we turned 20 years old, we in the studio together now working on a on her first song and really my first song as far as being in a studio trying to do something for real. And then a little bit later on, I got my own setup. I started buying my own equipment. And uh, around this time, R. Kelly was hot. Um, man, New Edition was on Home Again in 96. Uh, it was just so much going on. Like, I was born, like, in a, a really good time just to get a taste of the old school. Uh, the things that came up in, in the 80s and the 90s. And then the, the things that happened in the 2000s up to now. So, I'm like, uh, I still consider myself a... A, uh, I'm a current guy, you know. I, I I like the stuff on the radio. I like the old school. I like to take all of that knowledge and everything, and just it's just when I hear music, I, I see pictures and things like that. And uh, now I, I used to be against redoing tracks. Now I just redo them, you know. I just redo them just to get the feel, just to see what they use and try to redo that sound. Uh, my new thing now is sense programming sense uh, i got a couple on the way i'll be sharing that with you i have the i let a buddy of mine borrow the the deep mind 12d for now i have if i can get this up in the camera i have the behringer model d which is basically the uh it's a version of the moog um model d version um the mood joint be good for a lot of bass sounds and everything when you're hearing dr dre and uh snoop dogg what's my name that bass line yo <laughs> that's the joint right there the way and the way that parliament fucking daddy i was i was like real i was a baby back then with my brother one of my brothers he you know he's a, probably about four years older than me he used to play all those records and then my, my oldest brother he played those records too and whatnot and i, I just was soaking up all that all that goodness of those records from the 70s and the 80s and everything. And uh, when they brought in, um, how do I remember when, I was like real little when UTFO came out. I don't know, seven. I was I was like real, real little when those songs came out. And just the sound of those songs just intrigued me. And I just wanted to make beats ever since then. And what really took the cake is when Full Force did unselfish lover and we used to have this hi-fi stereo system that my mom rented from rent center and my brother brought home the record to unselfish lover and i used to play that record like a thousand times just sit there trying to break what are they doing to make this record when i'm supposed to be doing my homework but homework was easy for me because i made like straight a's and b's back then so it really wasn't nothing so i would take 30 minutes to do my homework and then next thing you know i'm just blasting that record till my mom got home around six o'clock She'd be like, turn that record down, turn that stereo down. You know, we was in an apartment then. But uh, shout out to Bowleg Lou, Paul Anthony, and B Fine, Brian. All right. Yeah, those guys, Full Forces, they're like right in the middle of that, that R&B, that soul for R&B and the hip hop. They were like right there in the middle of it. They might have been the, probably the first ones to really, you know, besides Teddy Riley back in the day, they were like one of the first ones to like just take that thing and just take it to another level. They are beat makers, all right? They are songwriters, and they are producers, okay? Full Force is responsible for a lot of hits, not just their own, a lot of hits. In sync. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, oh, my God. Jerry, baby Jerry, Kurt with the T, you know, um, and the other member, I'm going to put his name right here. I'm having a brain freeze right now, but the whole... The whole Full Force clan, man. I mean, they are like amazing. 
So I just want to recommend a couple of things. Um, actually, a couple of books. Watching YouTube, all that, that's cool. But when you read, it's just something about it just becoming just engraved in your soul. So I mentioned Full Force earlier, uh, not just a house party. This is the book right here. Uh, the Three Brothers, the, the, the uh, original house party bullies. And these guys right here like gold to me. All right. So this is their story. Their story is actually continuing because they're still alive and active and, and doing big things in the industry. Paul Anthony just released a new single, which is amazing. I'm supported. I actually uh, went to iTunes and bought it. All right. Not just streaming it. I bought it. All right. So that's one book. All right. Another book a must have. You've probably seen this one already. Okay. But this is all you need to know about the music business. All right. Make sure you get the latest version. I believe this is the latest version. Also, there are other books that talk about the, the streaming and this has streaming and everything in it too, but there are other books that specifically talk about the new music business, how all of that works. Um, I'm at the point now to where uh, with my website, the artists that I work with and produce, that music would be exclusively bought there, okay? Maybe it might be streamed and everything, but for a little while, I'm gonna have it just on this site. For all the fans of the artists that I'm working with, they can go directly to that site or to the site that I help build for them. Because everything I knew I'm doing with these handpicked artists, I'm hands-on. It's almost like I got a label, but I don't have a label. I'm not dealing with I'm doing another record label. I'm not doing it anymore. So, no, I'm not doing the label thing. I do uh, little joint ventures with artists. And, you know, as long as they got, a, they got the budget, they got a team and everything, we can make something happen. And then, <clears throat> all right, so Maurice White of Earth, Wind, Fire. This is a beat maker. Okay, he played drums, by the way, and all kind of instruments, but drums, the, the kalima, the little African piano. All right, and he is a songwriter and he's a producer. Okay, uh, Black Butterflies by Denise Williams. Did you know Maurice White did that? Uh, Don't Ask My Neighbors. All right, look up those songs, all the, the people he produced. Besides Earth, Wind, Fire, that whole band is a beat maker, songwriter, production combination of geniuses okay all right so maurice white is somebody that that inspired me himself so look at the people that inspire you i have jermaine dupree's book on the wall i have jim and jam terry lewis on the wall they are the ultimate <laughs> team okay jim and jam terry lewis um who else uh, i got timlin dr dre on the wall those are my guys, you know. I really look up to them. Uh, L.A. Reid, all of those guys. Uh, Ray Daniels, shout out to Ray Daniels. Ray Daniels. We're going to talk about integ integrity in the music business. That's one guy that has integrity. So it's a lot of scammers out there, So, but just be careful. So that'll be my take for now. And go ahead and feel free to comment and subscribe and everything. And... Um, Hopefully I'll see you next time and please like the video, share the video, have comments. Maybe I set up something where we talk about this live. Uh, if I can get enough people who say they're going to join, we'll do it and make it worth, you know, we'll make it worth. If I can get at least 10 people, we'll go ahead and do a live and uh, maybe do a little cook up and let y'all be the producers. So I'll just make the beat and then maybe we have an artist or something in here and then y'all can direct them and, you know, uh, maybe send me your beats and then we'll see if I can write something to it. Or we get a team of writers and write to it. You know, we, I'm going to start opening up the door like that pretty soon. I got a few things jumping off. I won't talk about it until it happens. Um, not not only am I working with artists and things like that on all levels, I also do uh, music for television and movie and scoring and things like that. So we talk about how producers and how musicians, songwriters make money, okay? I'm just making a beat, trying to get it on Lil Wayne's next CD. There are a hundred other ways to make paper, in the music business okay will you become a millionaire i don't know maybe you know it just really depends so it's it's all about the work that you put in how much work are you putting in you can't just make one beat a week or a month and talking about i'm a producer i'm gonna be a, a big time producer you know how much work goes into it do you know what timlin did to get to where he is now do you know what dr dre went went through do you know how long it took to make uh, The Whole World by Outkast? 150,000 sitting there going through, <laughs> like almost a whole day going through trying to find the perfect snare 
that is a he is a producer he's a beat maker songwriter and a producer okay Andre 3000 not just a guy who dress up and do what he does you know he he is responsible for the final sound of those records especially you know the things that he do for himself but um I can talk about it all day so yeah just uh be sure to subscribe like and share and ring that notification bell if you have any questions hit me in the comments and peace out before I actually go I just want to bring up something we're going to break down um you know, you produce a lot of people married at DJ Khaled and everything. And I, I keep hearing all this stuff right there. I got mad respect for DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled is where he's supposed to be. DJ Khaled been hustling. He just didn't come out yesterday. This guy been working ever since the big pun before big pun days. Like he actually, he's a hand, hands on, like some of y'all saying, oh, since he don't make beats, he ain't a producer. That's a, that's a lie. Okay. He'll find a beat maker and he'll make a song out of it. It was a brilliant idea to put... <laughs> Rihanna on that track with uh with uh Wyclef's beat. Okay? The the uh what's the other song? With 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 um Wild Ones. Okay, that was an excellent idea to put her on that. That's that's what a producer does. He figured it out. Diddy's idea to remake all them 80s joints. He had other cats, you know, D Dodd and all them cats making beats and all that. He'll, he'll, he got to do with putting the final song together. You know, big stuff. He's in there, whatever. Okay, yeah. Maybe he did touch the drum machine. Maybe he didn't. He didn't have to. It's all about the final outcome of the record. Okay. And most producers in Nashville don't even play instruments. They just got the ear. You ever heard of the Golden Ear? Another movie. A movie that I'm gonna uh, recommend is called That's the Way of the World, and it's starring Earth, Wind, and Fire. It just shows how they were this average band who played okay, and then this. God, this, this producer guy came in and just took their stuff and polished it. So what it was, it started out with demos. And then this producer came in. They, they said he got the golden ears. He came in and he just switched everything up, even changed the vocalist on the songs and re and um had redesigned the way the song was and everything. It's called That's the Way of the World. I'll leave it in the link in the description down below. Watch that. If you serious about being a producer, watch that video. Watch that movie. All right, it'll be worth it. Trust me. This way you can get an idea of more of an idea of what a producer does. A producer just don't make beats. They do a whole lot more than that. Okay. Like Herb Gotti, you know, Seven O'Reilly is doing those beats. Yeah, he did the tracks. Okay. He produced a lot of the records too, but Herb Gotti was the guy who put the polish on all that Ashanti stuff. And Ashanti is a producer in her own right. She's a vocal producer. Okay, she knows what she wants. She knows what it's supposed to sound out like when it's done, especially vocally. So, you know, it's different levels to it, but all right, I'm going to end it right there, and uh, we can talk about this all day. All right, please like and subscribe and share. I'm desperately eager to hear what you all got to say. <laughs>